nonsense. Let me get my chat in here real quick. One second, let me just get my chat loaded up in here. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Chat. Put the new code in there. Okay, I can see my chat. Thank you. Whew, okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my live. Y'all know I don't normally go live this late. Like, <laughs> hardly ever go live this late. But um, thanks for tuning in, you guys. And yes, no nonsense. I am okay. My uh, family is okay. My sons are okay. Um... It's, it's a mess over here in my neighborhood right now. Um, from what I gather so far, because I was actually at work at my part-time job. I had did a live earlier on the way to work about um, Liam Neeson, you know. And I had did a live, and I was like, I'm just going to be here for a few hours, and then I'm going to go back home, you know, to my kids and stuff, you know, like I normally do. And I start getting phone calls at work, like, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half after I get to work. And everybody's asking me, are you okay? Are the kids okay? Hold on, let me know if I'm still buffering. It looks good on my side, but let me know if I'm still buffering. Matter of fact, let me uh see if I can... Does it look... Is it okay? Okay. Am I buffering though or am I okay? Let me know if you can see me okay and if you can hear me okay. But yeah, um, am I okay? No nonsense? Am I buffering or was that your phone? Okay, anybody out there watching, can you let me know if I'm buffering or not? Okay, well, if I'm buffering, somebody let me know so I can try to correct it. <clears throat> but, yeah, so, I mean, I was at work when I got started getting the phone calls. Thank you, Blazing. Am I buffering, Blazing? Let me know if I'm buffering because <laughs> this is my first time really going live from this new channel. So I want to make sure it's all set up right. But I just happen to be, um, and also let me put up the phone number just in case anybody want to call in because I got the phone lines open. So just in case anybody wants to call in, let me put the phone number up there. Okay, there's the phone number on the screen, 641-715-0872, access code 434-478. So, if you, you want to call in, feel free to call in. But, I, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I was at work, and I started getting all these phone calls, and people asking me, what's going on? Are you okay? Are you safe? 
is your boys okay? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> why y'all asking me all these questions? Like, what's going on? And so then people start inboxing me and calling my work phone. My auntie called and I'm like, what's going on? And they tell me that there's been a shooting on my block and they were trying to make basically make sure we were safe. So I immediately start calling my kids. You know, my oldest son, he wasn't answering the phone. I'm blowing his phone up, blowing his phone up, blowing his phone up. Because usually around that time, he leaves the house to go to his girlfriend's house, who don't stay that far away. But we mainly always go one direction to get out of our neighborhood, even though there's like four, five different ways to get out of our neighborhood. We normally go like, you know, a, a particular block to get out of our neighborhood. And so I started panicking and everything. And then I called my other son and he picks up the phone. He's like, sup, mom? I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, I can vouch for one of you guys. Now, where's your brother? And he was like, he's downstairs asleep. I'm like, are you sure he's downstairs asleep? Yeah, he's downstairs asleep. Is his car outside? Yeah, his car is outside. Okay, could you go downstairs? Mom, he's downstairs. No, you go downstairs and you verify that your brother is downstairs in his room sleep. Because sometimes he'll leave his car home and go with friends. You know, friends will pick him up and take him with him and he'll leave his car at the house. So they both were safe. And I was like, well, dang, what happened? What's going on? Then I turned the internet on and or at work, I go to the news channel and like literally houses down from our house, a few houses down, there was two shootings, one guy... Um, he's dead. And the other guy, they said it was, um, he went to the hospital in critical condition. I haven't checked the news yet. Matter of fact, let me pull up KETV right now. Um, because I haven't checked the news yet to see if that other guy, uh, made it or not. But, and then I had no idea who it was. I just knew it was a shooting and it was on my block and I'm at work. So I had no idea who it was, but come to find out, um, my youngest son kind of familiar with the guy, but not really, but knows who he is. And I guess the guy happens to be some young guy. He's a rapper and, um, I don't know if he lives on my block or if he was just, on my block over somebody else's house. I really don't know the lowdown of the story. I'm just, I'm just glad we are safe. I'm like, this just is really hit close to home. And I'm like, is this a bad sign for our city already? Because there was, I think, some shootings last week um, or a couple of weeks ago and the year just started. And I'm like, dang. A lot of y'all don't know about Omaha. <laughs> y'all just think we, you know, a little spot on the map in Nebraska. But it gets gritty here in this city. And we have, you know, a, more murders than we should have and gang violence than we should have. So for it to land, like, right on my block this time, I'm just like... I don't know how to feel right now. My son talking about, he texts me at work talking about it's time to move. I'm like, it's time to move? Okay, well, can you help me uh, <laughs> with moving expenses? <laughs> I mean, can you help me with moving expenses? Uh, We need down payment deposit. I mean, it takes a lot of money to move. And then it's like I stay basically in the hood. I've always stayed in the hood my entire life, born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska. I've only stayed away from the hood um, maybe one time in my life for like a year. And then other than that, it was always in the hood. So I'm used to things that you shouldn't have to get used to, if you know what I mean. 
Like, just like how some of y'all might deal with in the bigger cities, Chicago, L.A., Atlanta, uh, you know, bigger cities, we're on a smaller scale, but we still have sometimes more violence than we should have for us to be on a smaller scale, but we are the biggest city here in Nebraska, so, you know, exactly, prayers for the deceased family, I don't know them personally, but there's a lot of people on Facebook um, posting their rest in peace, and you know how it goes when somebody passes away and people start, you know, posting prayers and posting words of encouragement and things like that. It's like all over Facebook, all over this young man. And when I say young man, this is like a, a young man, like a young man's page. And again, I don't know him personally, but I mean, yeah, it gets gritty up here. <laughs> it does, Blazing. I'm serious. <laughs> it, it really does. Um, and like I said, I've been in the hood all my life, so murders and shootings is nothing new. Um, and then, you know, growing up, we had all kind of different games in our family from GD to Bloods to Cribs to, you know, in our family, all around on all sides, mom, dad, stepdad. I mean, <laughs> it, it was nothing to grow up around people who was, you know, living a violent life. Or maybe walking a violent, you know, you know what I mean? Hanging around violent people, things like that. Um, fighting, shooting, people going to jail, in and out of prison. I'm used to that. But still, when it gets so close to your house, so close to your home, it, it's so different. It's so different. And to be at work, like, panicking. Like, if my kids do not answer this phone... If my kids do not answer this phone, I'm about to get out this place. I'm about to clock out. And mind you, I'm the only one there, the only one working at the desk, <laughs> at the nursing home. And I'm like, I'm about to clock out, lock these doors, secure the place, and I'm out. <laughs> but finally they answer, so I'm glad they answered. I'm glad they safe. And when it was finally time for me to get home or get off of work, I'm like, okay, my auntie called down to my job and it's like two of my aunties work at my job and one of them was off and one of them was at work. So she called to alert me and my auntie of what's going on and also she was like, I don't know how you're going to get home. I'm like, what you mean? I'm like... I'm sure I'll be able to get home. She was like, niece, the whole, she, she said the whole, it's like, I don't know. Let me see. One, it's probably like a 10 block radius around my house. And mind you, there's like five routes at least. It's at least five routes. Cause I stay like on a long block and then I can go out this way. I can go out this way. And when you go out this way, there's like two more blocks on the side this way, another block on the side this way. So it's plenty of routes to get to my house. They were all sold up police tape. I mean, police cars blocking, literally blocking sideways each block. And I couldn't get my car on none of them blocks. The police wouldn't let me get my car on none of the blocks. I was like, okay, how am I going to get to my house? Because the police were really not trying to allow me to get to my house. So I ended up finally, after going block to block, trying to uh, get to my house, finally... One of the, um, one of the police cars or one of the, the guys from the, uh, you know, the police, the people who were basically blocking all the blocks, the police, they finally was like, you know what? If you park your car back there, I can walk you home. So I'm like, you gonna walk me home? He walked me all the way, all the way home. It's cold. It's like eight degrees here. 
<laughs> cold, like eight degrees here, and he walked me all the way home. It was like four blocks. And he was like, I have to do it for your protection because at that time, I don't know if they had, um, I don't know if they had anybody uh, in custody. And of course, he, w he wasn't going to tell me. The policeman wasn't going to tell me. But I had made a post on my Facebook page. I'm like, although I was kind of feeling like uncomfortable walking with this policeman because I mean this dude was walking like right we was almost shoulder to shoulder walking all the way to my house I'm like dang he ain't gonna give me no room I'm trying to scoot over and walk a little further away and he keeps getting closer and closer I'm like okay I got my own bodyguard but then I was like feeling kind of weird because I don't know I, I have these weird vibrations when um close to a police officer and I think it just has to do with a lot of you know a lot of what's in social media a lot of police brutality um it was crazy it was like <laughs> after I parked my car I had to walk a couple of blocks just to get to the intersection where the cop was who said I could um park my park my car a couple blocks up and then I would have to walk and then he would have to walk me the rest of the way and I got out the car and I grabbed my laptop and put in my duffel bag and I threw it over my shoulder and I'm like I don't know I just felt awkward because I'm walking up to this cop I got a duffel bag on my shoulder and he could tell it was like something heavy in there because the way I was walking, and I got a big, huge laptop, so it's really heavy. <laughs> and I was just thinking like, oh my God, I don't know. I just, for some reason, I felt safe, but not so safe. Does that sound strange to you guys? Like, I don't know. Some of y'all might understand where I'm coming from, but it's like, okay, I know this police is here to protect and serve, but... I just don't trust all police. I guess I can just put it that way. I just don't trust all police. And it's dark. We on an alley. Like, we on an alley, a dirt road, and it's dark. And the only thing you can see is police lights way down there, way down there, way over there. And I'm walking with this police officer in a dark, gravel, dirt alley. And I was just like, God, please just let me get home to my sons. Just let me get home to my sons. I just never had that feeling before. But I'm home. I'm safe. I just want to say thank you to all those who checked on me. Thank you to all those who called my job, blew my phone up, inboxed me. I was like, there's a lot of people who know where I live. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you would think that people, you know, <laughs> not, I, I didn't realize how many people knew where I live. Like, seriously, and only been over there in that neighborhood for like a year or so. So I was kind of like shocked, like, yeah, that's my block. What's going on? But anyway, it, it's nice to have somebody check on you and, you know, make sure you guys are safe and everything. Because again, my kids was at home by themselves, and although they're older kids, still, I was like, this is a few houses down, and I was just like, I immediately was thinking, like, <sighs> I swear, around that time, I think it was like around 5.45-ish, 6, 6 is something like that, Central Standard Time, and that's usually the time my son leaves the house. To go to his girlfriend's house. After he gets off of work. He usually comes home. Shower. Change. Might take a nap. And then he gets up. And I'm like. Thank God this boy was wore out today. I mean. He. <laughs> he delivers furniture. So he was like wore out. Wore out. And he came home. And he got straight in the bed. And I'm like. And he was there. For the rest of the evening. So I'm like. That is just crazy. 
And that's the thing. They had to make sure they didn't contaminate the scene. And I don't even know if the cop that let me through, well, I'm pretty sure he wasn't supposed to because, like I said, there was other routes to my neighborhood. And every time I pulled up, you know, as close as I, well, a comfortable position, you know, to the intersection. Not too close on the cops because, I mean, somebody just got murdered and they're probably looking for, you know, a suspect. So I didn't pull too close, but I would, every intersection, I would pull up, open the door and just open the door and start yelling like, can I get through? I just want to go home. And each time, I'm sorry, ma'am. And this one guy, I thought he was going to let me through. He was like, he felt so bad. I'm like, listen, I just worked between both jobs, 13 hours today. I just want to go home. My kids is home. He said, are they little? I said, no, they not little. They can fend for themselves. They old enough to be home by themselves. And he was like, well, I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, you don't know what to tell me. I I can't get to my house. Like, you guys have surrounded like a 8, 10 block radius. And like two blocks over, two blocks over, three blocks this way, three blocks that way. I mean, it, it was like a huge radius that they covered. And he told me I couldn't go home. I said, so what am I supposed to do? Uh, well, you can try to come back in like two or three hours. I'm like, two or three hours? He said, yeah, because forensics literally just got here. And it's going to take them a few hours. And we can't have nobody contaminating the, you know, scene. I'm like, dang. I said, can I, can I just park my car somewhere and walk? And he was like, nope, I'm sorry. I can't let you do that either. And at that moment, I was about to, like, I was literally about to call my cousin who stayed, like, like right by me, like a block, a block outside of the, of the um, area that was taped off. And I was going to call them and be like, open up the door, fam. Let me in. I know, I know they knew what was going on because they like a block away from the scene and they on a hill so they can look down. They can literally see my house from their backyard. So I know they knew what was going on. So I, I know I would have been, you know, okay to go over there. They wouldn't have minded. But I didn't want to go over nobody's house. I wanted to go home. <laughs> I've been working 13 hours that day. I want to go home. Well, today. I said that day. But today. So anyway, I tried one more time. And I tried the last intersection, which was a dirt road. A gra I mean, it got huge crater holes and everything. My car was just like, <laughs> you know, that's how raggedy the road was. And it was dark. And I pulled up as close as I come, you know, a comfortable distance. Open my door, and again, I was like, "Officer, can I please get through to my house?" Again, I'm sorry, ma'am. We can't let nobody through. We can't let you contaminate the scene. I'm like, but I really, really want to get home. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to get home. They come out two, three hours. It's going on 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I'm like, again, I could probably go over to my house and chill. But I would have to be over their house to like 12, 1, 2 in the morning, maybe. And then try to go home. Nah. So I really wasn't feeling that. So anyway, this guy, I think he just... I don't know. He looked like, he looked really young, like he could have been a rookie. But he was like, you know what? Just park your car up there around the corner and stuff because the gravel road is really narrow and basically two cars can't even pass on the same road. That's how it was. So I had to back all the way out because they had to keep that road clear. That's why I had to park around the corner. <laughs> I mean, and then I had to get my stuff put in my duffel bag, walk back to the police officer in the dark. It's freezing cold. I'm like, oh, my God, I just want to get home. And then the whole time I'm thinking, like, I don't know who this family is. I don't know who was killed. But I just started praying for them. Like, God, you know, please look after the person who was shot, the one that's still, you know, in the hospital, I believe, still in the hospital, you know, 
bless him bless his family the guy who passed away if he has children i mean i was just like praying like you know like if i if i was praying for somebody that i knew so it it's 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 crazy over here and i just looked out the window before i went live and it's still lights i can see right out the window the lights though there they basically said once you see the lights gone then you know you can go back to your car and I was like, should I go to sleep and just get my car in the morning? I'm like, no, I'm going to stay woke for a couple of hours. And that's when I decided to go live and talk about it. Because it's, it's, it's like really, really a scary situation, you guys. And again, prayers to the family of the guy. I'm not going to say his name. I saw, I saw it on Facebook. Um, I'm not going to say his name in respect of the family um i think they might have said it on the news already the name of the person who was murdered but or killed i should say uh, so you know just a respect for the hey chef hey chef how you doing chef and shade chef and shade but yeah no this no nonsense prayer you know, for the deceased family and all his loved ones and friends. And I was just going down his timeline like, this guy has a lot of friends, a lot of loved ones. I don't know what happened. Some people's like, it might be gang related. I mean, I was on the guy's page and I did see a lot of pictures of a lot of people, including him throwing up gang signs in a lot of the pictures, but I'm not pressing any judgment. I'm not going to say it was gang related because I don't know that. And, you know, sometimes people prejudge, prejudge, and, oh, well, this person do, you know, because that's what they're going to do. You know, by tomorrow in the news, they're going to be talking about this young gentleman they're going to be talking about his social media. You know how they do. They're going to be talking about the social media. They're going to be showing pictures. And the police and everything are going to, like, with fine, like, tooth comb, go through this person's life and the person who was also injured that was taken to the hospital in critical condition. So I'm not going to pass any judgment until we get further and in, more information, more detailed information. But, you know, I can't, I cannot say, or I cannot lie and sit there and be like, dang, was this guy in a gang? You know, is it gang related? You know, it, it does cross your mind, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just know what I saw. And I mean, there's all kind of, you know, them signs and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't know. But, regardless, regardless, it's still somebody's child. It's somebody's brother, somebody's cousin, friend, maybe parent, maybe uncle, you know. So, again, rest in peace to the deceased. And, you know, I, I said my prayers already, but bless the family. Bless, bless the family. All right, no nonsense. Thanks for checking in. I'll see you on the, I'll see you on social media tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sure I'll see you tomorrow. If you upload some videos, I'll try to tune in. But yes, I don't know if anybody is watching who, um, I think a few of y'all who tuned in is from Omaha, from my city. So if you have any comments on the situation and would like to call in, let me know. I got the phone lines open. Um, the phone number is posted on the video. So if you know the person or know somebody who know the person or got anything to say or want to give your respects, or anything to the family, feel free to call in. Because, again, I don't know the person personally. I just, you know, ask God to, you know, bless the family, console them, give them peace, 
help them get through this because regardless of how a person dies is it still makes a huge impact on everybody involved and their family and friends and loved ones so that's all i have to say on that and again i thank god that my sons were safe i still have to you know give god thanks for that as well But, I don't know. I just hope it's not a bad sign for what's to come. You know how you have, like, shootings and murders um, before summer? It's like, it's too cold out here for that. Like, who just goes around just, I just hope it wasn't, like, an intentional shooting. I really hope it's not gang violence. I really hope it's not gang related. Because it's just so close to home. And I just, we already have a bad name. You know, North Omaha, we, we're we known for violence. We're known for gangs. We're known for shootings. We're known, I mean... It's just sad that it's, it's a fresh new year and already this is how we starting the year off. This is how we starting the year off. And it just makes you wonder what's, what's to come for the year. What's to come when spring gets here, when it gets a little warm, when it gets summertime. But, you know, we guys, we just got to for, pray for our city, pray for our loved ones, keep our keep ourselves prayed up. And it's crazy because I pray a lot, and sometimes I don't have a reason to pray. I just, I don't know, I think I get that from my mom because, rest in peace, my mom, she was like a prayer warrior, raised me in church since I was four, um... And I'm telling you, she would pray all the time. She would be washing dishes, praying, folding clothes, praying, combing my hair, praying, burning my ear off with the hot comb, praying. I mean, <laughs> she was always praying or reading her Bible. She was like really, really religious. And so I get that from her. So when I was on my way to work, like <clears throat> before I started my live video, I was, you know, praying in my head. Just for some reason, I just started praying, you know, Father God, please, you know, bless my family, my friends, my love. I just do that, like, just out the blue sometimes. And then I was messing around with my little phone and everything and started to do my live and drove to work and started working. And it's like, you never know. You know, when you pray, why are you praying? So, you we hear that all the time. Stay prayed up. Make sure you and your family stay prayed up. And that is really, you know, something to live by. And we don't ever know what's going to happen. When something bad might happen. But it helps to be prayed up. And always, always, always. Even if your children are grown, still talk to them. Children are, once they hit like 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, I know sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to still parent them because they think they know everything. And sometimes they be out there in the streets and they, they be doing stuff that you know they shouldn't be doing. And still, talk to them. Stay on them. They, know, they might know right from wrong. They may know they shouldn't probably be hanging around certain people or certain individuals. And sometimes they might fall and bump their head. But, but, you still have to stay on them. Still continue to pray for them. Still ask God to alter their steps if they are on the wrong path and you know keep your family prayed up 
And even if they're 21 or 22, 23, 24, 25, if you see your children out there doing something that you think they should not be doing, continue to talk to them. Don't beat them over the head with it because you know you can run them off. You know you can run these kids off if you if you do too much. <laughs> if you do too much <laughs> at one time. <laughs> we know that sometimes you can run these kids off. They, they okay, okay. Mom, that, that all right, all right, I got you, I got you. So you know. But anyway, see you later, Blazing. See you later. I'm about to end this live as well. I don't have any phone calls coming in, so I'm going to turn off the phone lines. But, um, again, again, keep the family of the deceased in your prayers, as well as the person in the hospital that was taken there in critical condition. I just checked the news, and I didn't see any updates. So, you know, hopefully he'll pull through. And he'll be able to come home and maybe even help the police identify if they don't have a suspect, you know, identify who possibly, you know, shot, you know, the, the other person or killed the other person. Or Hopefully this, this crime will get solved and hopefully justice will be served. And I don't know, that's, that's all I got to say on this matter. But anyway, you guys... I'm going to get off of here. I'll probably still stay up for a little while longer just to see if it's um, safe to go get my car pretty soon. I really don't want to go get it early in the morning because it's already 8 degrees here. Um, it's going to be way colder in the morning, and I'd rather go get my car now, put it in the, put it in the garage because I'm working from home tomorrow morning. And I just don't want to have to leave the house in the morning if I don't have to. So anyway, you guys, again, thanks to everyone who called me, texted me, inboxed me um, to check on me and my family <clears throat> to make sure that we were safe. And again, and again, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of who this person was that was killed, I don't know this person from Adam, please please pray for the family pray for the victims and that's it and in the meantime and in between time prime time squad as usual stay blessed be safe stay safe be blessed and i'm out deuces <laughs>